In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a frame by frame printed mixed media effect as an animation in After Effects. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and I'm a visual artist and graphic designer. And recently I've been really getting into creating these simulated mixed media effects for my animations. The goal of this is to make your digital animation look as if it was printed out multiple times and each frame has been scanned in back individually and made that into an animation. That's actually how I made the intro for my YouTube channel that you just saw, but I just wanted to show you that there's an easier method to do this completely digital if you do not really have the space to do this physically. So before we start the video, all you need to do is use some footage that you have laying around, whatever it is that you want to edit. In my case, I'm going to use a 3D render animation that I made in Cinema 4D. And another thing that you really do need is textures. In my case, I'm going to use a paper texture that's actually available on my website on dreadlabs.net. If you get it for yourself, that would actually be a huge help to me and it would help me keep creating these free tutorials for you guys. I am completely fine by you not getting an asset on my website. If you want to do that, that's completely fine. You just have to follow along with another paper texture that you found elsewhere online. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into the process video. So we're here in After Effects, and this is a 24 frames per second animation that I made in Cinema 4D, like I said. And if you want to learn how to create this in Cinema 4D for yourself, the tutorial of it is actually also available on my YouTube channel. Quick note, this is 24 FPS, but if your footage is anything else, it's also completely fine. So we're gonna do this in two parts. So part one will be making this look like it's been screen printed or something like that. The second part is adding some paper textures and make it look like it's been printed out and scanned back in. Let's start with the first part. The first thing that you need to do is add in a new adjustment layer by going to layer, new adjustment layer. I will call this grain and threshold. The first effect that you wanna add to this is, you guessed it, a threshold. And this will make it so your image is completely black or white. But what usually happens with this is that your image is kind of like indistinguishable. So something that you want to do is add some grain to that in order to kind of remove that effect. So if you search for grain, all you need to do is find the add grain effect in After Effects and make sure that you put it above the threshold filter. I'm going to change the viewing mode to final output. Turn the intensity up to 2 and the size up to 1.25. And now I'm going to just tweak the threshold level just a little bit. Turn it to like 97. And as you can see, there's a lot of detail in our image already. So if we zoom in and your render preview setting is full, the edges might be a little bit too hard. So what I try to do then is add a subtle Gaussian blur of a 1 pixel, maybe 1.5. This is fine. Another thing that we can do is add in another adjustment layer and we'll call this shadow slash ink bleed. We'll add in another Gaussian blur on this shadow and ink bleed one. And we'll make this, let's say five pixels, but we'll turn the blend mode to multiply. So if you do not have these multiply settings in your layer menu here, all you need to do is right click, go to columns and make sure that modes is switched on. And now if we zoom in, there's this slight little like shadow kind of ink bleed happening. And I, I think that's just add a little bit of realism because sometimes just ink washes out a little bit. So this is the base art that we have of our ink simulation. And the next part of this tutorial will be adding some realism to this composition. So the first thing that we wanna do is pick out a nice texture for this. And what I'm gonna use is from my Dreadlabs paper pack volume three. And I'm just gonna grab this like little bluish crafting paper and I'm gonna drop that on top of our composition here. And if we zoom out, you can see how immensely big this texture is. And let me tell you, that's gonna help out a lot. So the first thing you wanna do is rotate this thing 90 degrees. And I figure we can maybe lower the opacity a little bit as well. So maybe something like 50% because there's still like a lot of room around here. So the next thing that we want to do is go and search for the word wiggle in our effects. There's a couple of wiggle uh, expressions or effects here under the behaviors tab, as you can see. And the one that we want to have is wiggle position. So you want to drop that on here. And we only need to really worry about these two settings here. So I'm just going to collapse the transform and open this one. So if you just play this, let's just see what this effect does. Let's zoom in a little bit. 
it slightly moves something in 50 pixels direction on the X and Y axis once every second. The thing is, we want to do this with 24 times per second. And let's see what happens. You might have already guessed it, but this effect makes our paper texture now move 50 pixels every single frame in our composition. Because if you remember, our composition is 24 frames per second. We now want to increase this number maybe to 500. Let's see if that's possible. And of course, it's really possible. But depending on the size of your texture, what ha might happen is you might get frames where your texture isn't covering your composition anymore. And that's the reason why you want to find a high resolution texture. So let's go all and drag a wiggle rotation into this as well. We're going to change the wiggle speed to 24 again. And for the degrees, let's try 360 degrees. If we take a look at our preview now, it's still loading a little bit. But basically, we see a slightly different variation of the texture every single frame. And that's what we want, because that's also what you're going to see if you scan in a lot of different frames on different pieces of paper, of course. So the next thing is we're going to play around with some blend modes a little bit. I'm going to rename this paper texture to multiply. I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply as well. And that basically causes our paper texture to only affect the white spots in our image. And in our case, we only have black and white values, so that's actually pretty convenient. What I'm also going to do is duplicate this one and I'm going to rename this one to screen and we're going to change the blend mode to screen. And this way we could actually also impact the darker spots of our design. So let's take a look at this and see what it looks like with our textures. And while we're waiting for this to load, I just wanted to let you know that you can get the After Effects file of this project on my Patreon channel. For just five bucks a month, you'll get access to all of the PSD, Illustrator and After Effects files over 100 tutorials that are all available on my channel. By doing this, you really support my channel and you keep up getting more and more free tutorials from me, making me be able to do this for a longer amount of time. Anyways, let's see what it looks like right now. It already kind of looks pretty cool and printed out, but it still looks a little bit too perfect, if you know what I mean. The first thing is that it has a fairly high frame rate, and the other thing is that the scan in positions are just a little bit too perfect, in my opinion. Before we fix that, however, I'm going to change the textures and make them a little bit more subtle by searching for the curves in the effects and presets menu. And I'm going to drag the curves effect to the screen one. And by dragging in this slider, this will make the texture a little bit darker. And that way we don't really have to worry too much about like adding the color of the texture to our design. We can do the same thing with the curves adjustments for the multiply one, which we can make a little bit lighter so that the image will actually be a little bit more focused towards black and white. That being said, I'm also going to add a hue saturation to these to make the colors a little bit more subtle because I think it's a little bit too blue right now. Something like this works for me, but of course you can leave it however you want. So the next thing, like I said, is we're gonna see if we can make this a little bit less perfect. We're gonna add in another adjustment layer and we're gonna call this humanize. So the first thing that I wanna do is add another wiggle position. I'm gonna make it 24 pixels and just three pixels. And as you can see, our whole composition is shifting just a little bit around right now. And we can also do this with the rotation with a really low number. And this will just make it look like it's actually been scanned in by a human and not really arranged in a perfect way that a computer would. So let's do this as well with the rotation again. So we'll do 24 wiggles and then we'll just do maybe half a degree. We can collapse all of these now. And you may already have seen some problems in here. As you can see here at the top, there's a really small but wide bar here. And that's just because if we just remove the textures, our whole composition that's underneath that is basically just getting out of frame a little bit because it's moving down and rotating. So another easy way to fix this is in the effects and presets, we'll just search for the word transform. We'll add in a transform effect and we'll change the scale to 101%. And that usually does the trick. Maybe we have to go to 102 just to be sure. But that way, basically, we don't really have to worry about our whole composition getting out of frame. So let me just load this in real quick before we add the final effect that I think, in my opinion, works really, really well for this. Something that I 
personally kind of see is that a high frame rate maybe looks a little bit too perfect for a mixed media animation. It's definitely possible. I've seen a lot of very talented mixed media animators do this, but to make it look a little bit more humanized, I always try to drop the frame rate a little bit more. So this is 24 frames per second and it just looks a little bit too smooth, especially because our digital animation just looks really smooth. So what I do to counter that is I just search for posterize time and I just drop that on top of there and I just reduce the frame rate to 12 FPS. And this is basically what that will look like. So as you can see, our image, our animation just looks a lot more realistic with a drop frame rate. And that's just because mixed media animations, if you scan them back in, are just really hard to make. So by doing them frame by frame, you have to just scan in a lot less imagery. And that's why usually these images look like this a little bit more. So you don't necessarily have to do the first part in order to enjoy the mixed media effects of the second part. This is just something that I like to add to my existing animations to give them like more of a hand printed and mixed media kind of feel, I guess. That being said, however, I hope you found this tutorial useful. And like I said, you can get the texture that I used on dreadlabs.net, the After Effects file you can get on my Patreon channel, which is also in the description down below, together with a link to my Discord, which you can join and ask me any questions that you might have regarding to visual design, freelancing, this specific tutorial, anything really. You can also share any questions, any other tutorial suggestions in the comments down below. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. All of these things just really motivate me and help me create more tutorial content for you guys. So with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching. This is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out and I hopefully see you guys in the next video.